And I'm, I'm delighted to have Robert here to introduce this and have all you here. I mean, this is a way bigger audience than we expected. <laughs> and this is tremendous. And this is the kind of response we've been getting ever since we started working on this project that we're going to talk about today. It's a project that's really, really important to me and I think important to a lot of people in this room because it combines or it could combine our academic lives, our, these professional lives, and some things that are really important to a lot of us in terms of our real core values. So I want to introduce that and uh, tell you about what we're thinking about. So the first thing, where this started, was the recognition that over the past few years and in an accelerating way, claims about truth are increasingly contentious. I mean, claims about truth have always been contentious. There's always been battles in the political arena, in the scientific arena, in the cultural arena. But as everybody can see, the, the nature of those controversies is becoming deeper and more difficult and louder all the time. Uh, there are a few broadly accepted uh, sources or indicators of validity. It, there's not an era anymore where you could listen to the evening news and you knew that Walter Cronkite was being straight with you, right? Or that the New York Times was accepted as, okay, that's pretty much the facts. They might have their slant, but we can accept the facts that are being presented. And that is absolutely not the case now. And this makes it much more complicated for citizens to find their way through the information landscape to have a reasonable view of what's going on. A couple other examples. The New York Times claims that Trump told a public lie at least 20 of his first 40 days as president. And they distinguished between misleading statements and lies and had a fairly high bar for what they considered a lie. So they're making this claim. It's not so much that I'm saying the claim is true. What I'm saying is the New York Times on the one hand and the president on the other are in such completely different places. The, the separation between those two things that at some point were accepted as um, not lying outright. Um, I think this is, this is extraordinary. Uh, the existence and source of the climate, cha uh, climate change is contentious in spite of uh, no, not being contentious in scientific circles. So this whole thing that many of us have seen where, where um, there can be a very clear scientific consensus on something being the case, and yet in the public square that can be undermined simply by saying, I don't believe it. And I th one of the things that I think is most concerning is confirmation bias. Confirmation bias is a, a psychological phenomenon that exists in all people where we, just because of the way we're wired as humans, tend to notice information that corresponds with our existing beliefs and integrate that more than we integrate information that is, in, at, that is counter with our existing beliefs. Okay, that's always been the case since like we came out of the trees. Um, what's new is that the sources of information that people are exposed to are more and more biased more and more radically biased. So people exist in these information bubbles that hardly overlap. So somebody with a very conservative point of view can, through the internet, select their news sources such that what they're getting is systematically biased in that direction. Somebody with a very liberal point of view the other way around. So it's not just this, this psychological phenomena, the, the social phenomena of how we get our information is changing and potentially um, further polarizing uh, discussions and making it more difficult to identify what should be believed. So given that, and given the obvious importance, I guess I can't really go on without mentioning uh, the Charlottesville um, events just, just a couple days ago. And it, it could be claimed that, that's, that those kinds of things are potential outcomes from this kind of polarization. So the, the stakes for individuals and for society could not be higher. And then we come to the role of higher education where I've always thought, I think most people believe, that one of the fundamental things that we're about here in higher education is preparing citizens to be up to the job of 
a democratic society. And that involves having to somehow in navigate this information landscape such that they can make reasonable choices uh, in their political participation. So given all the things on the first slide, the challenge of that job, I think, is increasing. At the same time, the importance of that job is increasing. General education has always been here doing this job. But I think it's a time when the university needs a much broader uh, effort, where it's not limited to a certain number of courses that are mostly focused on you know, the student's first couple of years. I think the kind of work they do needs to be expanded out to be pervasive across levels of education and across courses, and not limited to specific courses that are designated to do this job. Uh, um, and a more integrated effort. General education exists in certain courses, but how well do the other courses pick up on those themes and continue those themes, carry them through? Given the kind of forces that are going on, for universities to have a significant impact on this problem, I think it's going to take a lot more than what we've been doing in the past. Um, so I think our work at universities and our work specifically doing this, addressing these kinds of issues is more important than ever. So department heads uh, as a group have, were very concerned about this. So we got together and um, um, developed a couple of uh, initiatives for this year. And what we want to do here is share with you what we're thinking about doing this year, which will be most effective if you all participate in this and you all uh, um, take this on and, and uh, ally with us in these efforts. And then we want to get your input on other ways that we can address these issues and things we can do going forward. So the first part of our presentation would be basically what have we developed and then how can you be part of this effort and then where else can we go? So first, uh, we're planning a series of public panels. These are multidisciplinary discussions of these issues. They're on-stage conversations that are very, very multidisciplinary, bringing uh, university faculty from many different areas to discuss how do we think about these. And there are so many facets of these issues that these are going to come out in these interdisciplinary conversations. And secondly, faculty workshops uh, that we're coordinating with uh, AIS to develop these workshops. We have one developed right now. We have several more coming. So Britt is going to talk in a lot more detail about the panels. So these panels are, um, so we'll, we'll have two in fall semester and two in spring semester. The um, panels are one hour long, one hour discussion between among the faculty, um, followed by a reception. And they're all looking at some different angles on this idea of um, truth and validity and in particular multidisciplinary or how different disciplines um, deal with these issues, looking at the, the fact that this isn't something new, it's something we've been struggling with, it might just be different or more prominent right now. Um, the, the panel will have four faculty members, all from USU but from different disciplines. Um, a, department head, again from a different discipline, will moderate each panel. Um, we're going to broadcast them to the, the regional campuses, and I think it will be on AggieCast. Um, and we're also planning to record them. So at the regional campuses in USU Eastern, people can watch the panels as they're happening, and then we'll also record them for um, if anyone wants to view them or incorporate them into classes later. And also in Digital Commons, the USU Institutional Repository will have information about the panels, um, collections of readings for the readings, and um, some more resources for, um, for students or faculty who, who want to follow up on those. So the, to get into the specifics of the panels, the first one will be September, oh, yes.
Yeah, we haven't talked about that. I The first thing that came to mind was something more low tech of we could even have an, an attendance sheet from a class maybe and someone could mark off. We That's something we can definitely. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I would say we can, we can absolutely work out a way to do that. Yeah. So yes, and you're anticipating one of the places we're going for lots of people is these are going to be most powerful if they're integrated with class assignments. So the way you're talking about integrating it is just exactly what we're hoping for. So we will make that happen. Yeah. Anything with 180 is moderately simple at best, but that could be an option. Yeah. Your first um, question about the gender and um, racial diversity, we did try. We I think we did better with the gender diversity. We um, we did have people who what weren't able to be panelists. They were on sabbatical, so that was definitely a consideration and something we worked for. Um, Yeah, and the nominations came from department heads. That's where we, versus sending it out to all faculty, um, as a department head initiative, we did work through department heads, but that might be something that. Yeah, that's a good, a good point. Okay. And, and to address your, your other question about what, what happens when truth isn't complicated? That is absolutely part of the discussion. I mean, that is what the discussion is about, is what are the contours of this thing? And it's been interesting trying to name it, because any words we come up with really capture part of it and are absolutely wrong about other parts, including facticity, including truth, including complicated. And that is exactly what we want to expose. Uh, in these panels. That's why we're having panels that are going to be very interactive among um, people who come at it with, from different disciplines and from different uh, knowledge bases. So, I'd invite you to email either of us, and then we can continue in, the, in this and find a way to make it work. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Sure. So I wanted to give a, some indication of, um, we'll hear the faculty who are on that first panel. And we, we started with the four panels being a lot more specific on the topics, but there was so much overlap. So, but this first panel, Truth is Complicated, um, there will be some general theme of kind of the historical context of truth. But the panelists themselves are each, they're getting together as a group and discussing kind of the, the ways that, that they're going to present these ideas through up in the lens of their own research or their teaching. Um, but some examples, Aaron Groh in management looks at um, 
the psychology underlying consumer behavior, and he also looks at cognitive bias. So he might bring, um, bring some of those ideas up. Courtney uh, Flint looks at integrating perceptions across diverse stakeholders and local and regional issues. So um, kind of looking at how, how people are discussing some of these issues. Um, Charlie Huneman has mentioned he often um, looks through the angle of kind of a critical look at science and scientific institutions and um, some, so that would be kind of a, a different angle on, um, on some of the ideas that other panelists will bring up. So we have Aaron Bro from Management, uh, Phoebe Jensen English, Courtney Flint Sociology, Social Work Anthropology, and then Charlie Huneman. Um, from philosophy and Tim Slocum, the head of um, SPUR, will be moderating that panel. November 14th is the next panel. Again, they're all 5 to 6.30, so an hour-long panel, 30-minute, roughly 30-minute um, reception. And a um, Amy Odom, some of the kind of her, her areas of research include um, how, how we come to know something from the, as a psychologist, she looks at that. She looks at confirmation bias. Um, Kathy Bullock from Journalism and Communication. Some of her research kind of is essentially persuasion and lies in ma from mass media, mass media perspective. Um, and then Jen Peoples from Languages, Philosophy, and Communication Studies. One area that she has talked about um, she'd like to investigate is the myth of photographic truth and how Photographs can be manipulated and influence truth or what, how people might interpret them. Um, and Jason Gilmore, his research, some of his research looks at misinformation in the American presidency mm -hmm. and in particular kind of a, a disconnect um, between accusation and evidence that have happened in some, some of the recent elections. And then Tammy Proctor, head of history, will moderate that panel February 13th truth and proof. Um, and this one will have some kind of angle um, looking at kind of the, the, the proof or what evidence, um, evidence that, that people are, are expecting or looking for or what they're accepting. Um, Frank Messina teaches, he's taught evolutionary biology for about 30 years here and has dealt with a lot of some of these issues in, in different ways with students. Um, Brad Cole from the libraries, he's going to talk about the Mark Hoffman forgeries. I don't know if y'all are familiar with those. And kind of the context of like what was happening that led people to, to believe these forgeries relatively easily um, until they realized they were, they were forgeries. Um, and then Laura Galfand, head of um, art and design, will moderate. And then the last panel, March 13th, truth and truthiness. We have Tim Hickson from Journalism and Communication, Rob Davies from Physics, and he's um, done, he works with climate change and has done a lot of work with communicating about climate change, um, public, public communication outside of the university. Um, Melanie Dominich Rodriguez, she's interested in looking at diversity and, and ethics and ways of knowing and ways of constructing knowledge. Um, and Tony Peacock from Political Science will moderate moderate that panel. So I'm just going to reiterate some of the things. It's really important for us to kind of find out that I know this about all the people in all those panels. We only have a certain amount of curriculum and we have to wait for faculty members to gather the philosophy. And yeah. given the Yeah. Yeah, maybe we'll follow up with you and, and talk about some different options. Really important. Okay, thank you.
in real time. Okay, thanks. We'll we'll follow up with you. Okay. Um, and one thing that we we are doing, we're planning to promote this directly to students, but we recognize that the key to success for these with getting students involved um, is going to be to integrate them into assignments, integrate them into content of courses. Um, some of the things that, that we thought of um, is maybe some discussions on before the panels on some different um, at the disciplinary context of, of some of these these topics um, if students attend panels following up with class discussions um, potentially writing assignments um, or different group group assignments um, extra credit but one thing that we wanted to learn from you and maybe help you get ideas from each other of what are there ways that you all see you might be able to incorporate um, the, the panels and some of the content and the ideas into your classes? What ways come to mind for you all? Yeah, well, that's just my thing with everything that's taught. So I teach media literacy. Oh, you teach media literacy? OK. Yeah, so I'm going to require my students to attend one of these four sessions depending you know, based on their schedule. They can the other one or the mm -hmm. other. And I'm going to have take home a space for them to write and then they come up with the topic for the one that they do the reflection on. Oh, okay, like a take home essay reflections. Yeah. I'm wondering if these panels are talking beforehand with each other a little bit. If they could produce a brief abstract of themes um, uh, that they plan on bringing up, it would make it easier, I think, for instructors to find connections with their content. I mean, yeah. the titles are somewhat informative, but they could go lots of different Smart, directions. Really. Yeah. So that might be really helpful. It, and I know this is short order, but if that could be sent out even before the semester begins so that we could start looking at connections before our syllabi are complete, that might really be helpful. Yeah, we're having a meeting next Tuesday, is that the 22nd, where, with all the panelists. And they will be working in their um, working within the panels that the five people will get together. And one thing we're hoping, or we're expecting, asking for, is a, a brief description of what they're planning to cover. So they'll have a chance to talk amongst themselves. So hopefully after the 22nd, we should have something um, to distribute um, to faculty. And yeah, I, I recognize that the titles are a little amorphous, but um, after the panels get together next Tuesday, we should have something a little more concrete. Yeah. Yeah, the good problem to have. Yeah, what the auditorium is 400. So maybe we'll have maybe we'll be like TEDx and we'll have an overflow viewing. Yeah, we can we might need to think about that. Like we really had no idea and this is really a firm. You know, everyone we've talked to is interested, but we really weren't sure on the yeah, the if instructors and faculty integrating into classes. So Gosh, we might have to think about some options. Yeah, actually, I was thinking about that too. Uh, I'll invite you, and I'll send this out uh, via email to lots of others. If you are going to require this, if you shoot us an email with uh, what course, how many students, and is this a hard requirement or is this like an extra credit kind of thing? Uh, because if, you know, if it's a hard requirement and you know 56 people or 200 people are going to be showing up here, if we could know that, then we can plan for it. Okay? And that would be a terrific thing. It'll be available recorded as well, though. So I'll, I'm going to require but I'll have my students know that they can watch the recording. Or the broadcast. They will, you're right. They will definitely be available both ways. So that'll be our, our fail safe. But we would like to get, you know, it's more exciting to be there live. And uh, we might even consider something about reserving spaces um, to be kind of systematic about who's actually sitting in the room. So 
please email, I'll just volunteer, me, sure, yeah. and then we'll figure out a system for this. They'll, they'll just be open, um, so open to all students. Yeah, yeah, that's how we were, were planning it. So maybe an extension or We can think about that. Um, do we really only have five minutes? Yep. Okay, because the, we, you mentioned the workshops, and that I might skip over. I'll, I'll mention, we, do we have more comments? Maybe seven, but let's keep. Okay. Other way, other thoughts on incorporating these into your, some of these topics into class assignments or readings or writing assignments? Discussion? As you think about this, I just want to put one more plug in for that. Mm -hmm. The panels are going to be really cool. They'll be a lot of fun. But for them to really affect the student long term, which is the outcome that has to happen if this is going to really have an impact, I think some kind of additional work, some kind of assignments, uh, whether it's discussion or writing or something like that is going to have to happen for it to really stick. So I just would encourage everybody to think about that if you're, if you're motivated and, and agreeing that this is really important stuff. And we are, um, we have partnered with, with some groups. We're planning to get the word out to connections and um, letting letting the, the new students know about it and hopefully they'll get information also or maybe have it integrated into some gen ed um, we're hoping to to work with honors we've contacted the honors folks we've listed it as an aggie passport event um, and we spoke with brock about connections with english um, composition and i see a couple english 2010 instructors um, and i think i we're hoping to catch up with with you all a little more and see if there are some, any, if it can integrate into writing <coughs> or um, reading assignments you all have. Of course, close, um, we've been working closely with Gen Ed, um, Material and Digital Commons. We've also spoke with um, Research and Graduate Studies. At, oh, five minutes, okay. And um, Robert with Academic and Instructional Services has been really helpful, um, the Provost Office. And if you have other ideas, if you, also Janice in International, International Office mentioned she'd promote it. Are there other groups? Yeah. It's more about like athletics. We ah, did, we haven't. That would be a very diverse group of students. Okay. Maybe the most diverse. Democratic and Republican organizations. Okay. US, USA. Yeah, we haven't worked. We haven't talked to them at all. The College of Ed. College of Ed, okay. Yeah, for future students. I mean, future teachers. <laughs> Current students. Other groups we. I think we should probably. Student Association. Okay. Student Association. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and I will. Thank I you. Can. Yeah, we do. <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry, but we, there's a few more things. Because I did mention that the panels were only part of our effort. The other part of our effort are faculty workshops. So exactly that. So we've been working with AIS, which is amazing, uh, to develop some workshops. Tuesday, October 17th, Truth and Fact in the Classroom with USU faculty panel. What this is going to be is kind of the proactive side about building um, building student understanding of these topics. And it's taking advantage of, as I mentioned before, general education has always been on this. And so we have two panelists who teach general education classes. And we'll talk about the kinds of things that they are teaching in those classes. And then we'll have two other panelists who teach courses in majors that are not general education classes, but who take advantage of and build on those general education classes. And that's, I think, a really important model for any of us who are in the majors thinking about how do we support this is by building on what's already been done. There's a foundation already existing, but a lot of us may not know about that unless we're really familiar with general education. And I think it might also be important for general education folks to then their side of the conversation of how do I 
do things that are going to link well with courses in the major. Right? So this is the part, this is what we identified as where we're going to get the most kind of bang for our buck here by planning uh, systematic integration across courses. So if you're in a position where you might be able to do that kind of thing, I think it's going to be a really important workshop. Another one that we've got on the boards but isn't as far along is responding to contention in class. And that was kind of mentioned. What do you do when you're surprised in class? When you said something that you thought was going to be just fine, common assumption, and suddenly on the spot it's not. Or maybe you're coming into a content area where you know this is going to be controversial. How do you handle those conversations? So that'll be an upcoming workshop. This was really uh, an example came to me yesterday when somebody was teaching in a class about um, preventing bullying uh, aimed at targeting LGBTQ, LGBTQ uh, individuals. And that person got a, uh, somebody in class who said, what about when they deserve it? And, okay, now what do you do? So that's just one example of the kind of thing that I think we need to be prepared for. What do you do when you're surprised like that? How do you keep that from completely blowing up? And then there's lots of lesser examples of that. And then we're interested in other workshop ideas. So we have like maybe one or two minutes, but I'm sure some of you are thinking about, oh, okay, we need training on something else. Are there others that are like really immediate to you? How can we students participate who think that their ideas are not going to be popular? Oh, kind of creating a space where people are willing to share yeah. minority opinions. Yeah. Other ideas that are coming to you right off? Well, these are going to be ad uh, widely advertised, so I think um, uh, you'll know about them and you can build on those. Yes? I think it would be helpful if we knew which specific uh, conspiracy theories or lack of uh, consensus topics would be emphasized in particular. So, you know, for me, the scientists, climate change and evolution are key, but, you know, are, are these panelists also going to do Yeah, and we'll get you those kind of abstracts. We'll get that out. But I'll tell you right now, it's, they're not going to be focused on particular uh, controversial topics like climate change. There's not going to be a panel that's focused on climate change. It's going to be much more on uh, the nature of uh, the information that we get these days, the nature of, of navigating information, whether it's about climate change or about Kennedy assassination or about anything else. Um, but it, we, we decided not to go kind of controversial topic by controversial topic, but rather more of a critical thinking approach, cutting across all of those. Um, I think you will find these panels will overlap quite a bit, because all of them aren't going to be discussions on stage that are multidisciplinary. So I think in terms of class, if you're thinking about uh, from, a, from an English composition point of view or something like that, I think really any of them will be equally good. Um, none of them are going to be really narrowly focused on a narrow topic. They're all going to be multiple perspectives, having conversations, showing how complicated this thing is. Even things that seem simple at the beginning, when you unravel them, when you have four professors talking about them, they're going to get complicated. Let's please thank our pre-